So I've been wanting to do a revisit of the Ryzen 5 6600H for a little while now, mainly due to the fact that as of right now, it is one of the cheapest ways to get into the modern AMD driver stack. And well, what do I mean by this? If you've seen any of the videos that I've done on systems with APUs based off of Vega graphics, so anything from the 5000 series and before, all of it is at this point been set to legacy status when it comes to driver development. It's really just meant to be bug fixes at most, but there's no optimization being done. And well, things are very different with the 6000 series. See, this was the generation that introduced the new RDNA graphics on the mobile side of things. And at the time of launch, this was a odd configuration from the get-go. See, the top of the line 680M graphics came with 12 cores. That was reserved for Ryzen. Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 processors. But you go down to the Ryzen 5 6600H and you end up with only six graphics cores. So on paper, effectively half the graphical performance of the top of the line. This was a really aggressive decision from AMD that I consider to be a huge mistake on their part. See, with the previous generation of APUs, when you went down to the Ryzen 5 tier, you weren't dropping down more than one graphics core. And that effectively meant that Ryzen 5s and Ryzen 7s weren't that far in terms of performance in games. That was a pretty pro-consumer move that AMD did at that time, but as their market share has grown, they've really started to tighten the grip, and this was the first generation where it became extremely egregious. So I want to see what this really cut down graphics configuration can actually do in 2024. So the first game that I took a look at is Helldivers 2, running with the lowest graphics settings, and we are using FSR at the balance preset. Pretty much the conditions that we've been using to test a lot of different systems. So comparatively speaking, the level of performance that we're seeing here is lower than most, but still beating out every Vega system. But there's a pretty noticeable decrease in performance in comparison to the top of the line 680M of this generation. Still, since its main competition is Vega-based systems, this does actually prove a really nice showing, and the fact that there is driver optimization being done for this specific APU really shines here in comparison to Vega. Another new title that has been out for a little while now is Ghost of Tsushima which has proven to be a great performer on a lot of hardware because of the fact that it is a port of a relatively old title at this point. But at the medium graphics settings, with FSR at quality, the level of performance that we're getting here is pretty rough, and there's visual artifacts that are happening in the game that I really couldn't explain. You might be seeing that there is a weird shifting of color on certain things where there's flashing blue cues to things. It's very odd, I don't really know why this was happening, but even after restarting, updating the drivers and everything, it just continued to happen, and only in this game. Can't really explain what the issue is there, but in general the performance also wasn't remarkable. But of course, this game does have a feature built in that could change that for us, and that is frame generation. We saw with the bigger brother of this APU just how big of a difference it could have in the performance, so let's see if it could bring this up to a level that is a lot more acceptable. And again, we do see that frame generation makes a huge difference in the level of performance that we can get out of certain titles, but again, the blue hue is still here to everything. So in general, it was a weird performing game on this this chip and I'm not 100% sure what's happening here. I've already ordered another system that has this APU just to make sure this one isn't failing, but the performance numbers that we were getting at least were decent and frame generation does a lot to make this a really far more playable experience on here, but this blue shifting thing is very noticeable and very distracting. So the next title I wanted to take a look at was Spider-Man Miles Morales, since that also has frame generation. So taking a look at it running with the medium graphics settings and FSR set to quality, this was a really rough experience. The 1% lows in particular were pretty bad, but even that FPS average isn't looking that remarkable. In general, not a very enjoyable experience like this in the slightest, which is very disappointing to see because this game really tends to play very well with low-end hardware, surprisingly so. But the inclusion of frame generation actually does a lot here. It makes this a 
far more consistent experience and in general feels great to play now which is remarkable to see it went from something that i really didn't want to sit there and play for more than five minutes to something where i could sit here and play this for hours it's at that level of playability where i could just get distracted by the game itself and not even think about the level of performance is it the smoothest experience i've ever had in this game of course not but it's consistent enough that i wouldn't really complain if i just wanted to play the game and that's actually a game changer because this feature made this go from something that is unplayable to a perfectly enjoyable time. And that's just from flipping a switch in the settings. That's really impressive to me. Of course, the lack of cores on this hardware does become apparent very quickly if we check out a title like Marvel Rivals. Keep in mind, this is just the playtest, but this Unreal Engine 5 game is extremely demanding. Surprisingly so, visually speaking, it doesn't look remarkable but it actually demands quite a lot from the hardware as you can see by the one percent lows here and this is fsr already at a setting that visually speaking makes it very difficult to play so even with an extremely aggressive fsr setting we're not getting anywhere near a good enough experience to play a title like this very disappointing to see and i'm hoping that maybe the devs could optimize this more to run on lower end hardware and maybe even amd's drivers can come with some optimization for it but as it stands this is really really rough of course where an apu like this really shines is in esports titles and here with counter-strike 2 running at the lowest in-game graphics settings and no need for fsr we're able to get a really great experience where the 1% lows are great and our FPS average is very consistent, as you can tell by those frame times. At the quality settings that you would use to realistically play this game, it's going to be a great time. Of course, I also took a look at Returnal running with the lowest in-game graphic settings and FSR at the performance preset, and this is what I expected, just a absolutely unplayable experience. This game is extremely demanding even on some of the best APUs, so something this cut down was going to have a rough time though it again did better than pretty much most vegas systems we've really ever taken a look at so it does show some merit over those apus for gaming purposes but as you can see it's not going to do anything remarkable you pretty much go from single digit one percent lows up to double digit but it doesn't really matter if it's not going past the teens but it still does open you up to a wider variety of games that you can play and considering the price that a lot of systems with this chip can be found at nowadays it does make kind of a lot of sense versus systems that have 5000 series apus red dead redemption 2 with the lowest in-game graphics settings and using fsr at the performance preset for example does give a very consistent experience it's not a high fps gaming experience and visually speaking it doesn't look great but if you've been wanting to play this game and this is the price range where you're shopping for a computer this is is about as good as it's going to get without you going down the used market if you're really interested in a mini pc at the sub 300 dollar price range this is about the best performance that i've seen in red dead redemption 2 vega apus really don't do as well as this and there are vega systems that are still in the 350 dollar price range so if you're looking to game this is really looking like the option but of course things do start to get a little rough when you try to get a little bit more demanding with the graphic settings as you can see here with mountain blade 2 banner lord running at the medium graphics settings our fps average and one percent lows aren't looking great you're really gonna have to drop down from that level and it really starts to get to the point where you might consider going with something with a 680m instead systems with the 7735hs apu for example that has the 680m are within a hundred dollar price range of systems with this APU and you are effectively going to see a doubling of your performance at least in certain titles but there is a noticeable improvement in performance so I think it should be apparent why I was very disappointed in AMD's decision to make this a six core graphics chip instead of something like an eight core that they ended up doing with the next generation AMD really wanted to show the difference between the 680M and 
pretty much every other APU on the market. And they sacrificed the Ryzen 5 tier to do that. And unfortunately, it put it in a situation where it doesn't stand out all that much in comparison to Vegas systems until all these years later, where Vega's biggest failing is just the fact that AMD doesn't want to optimize for it anymore. Could optimization close the gap with the 6600H? Perhaps, perhaps not. The point is we'll never know because the AMD is not ever going to optimize for Vega ever again. And developers are moving away from it with each passing generation, if there are even any developers out there optimizing for Vega in general. It wasn't exactly a very popular architecture outside of the mobile market, and I don't know how many developers are really optimizing their games for effectively laptop parts. I want to do a comparison of this chip against a Vega APU in 2024 because I want to see what really has happened in terms of optimization differences here and just what the difference or lack of difference there is between the two. So stay tuned for that. I hope you found this interesting. I'll catch you guys in the next one.